Welcome to the Post Sunday app. We are looking at Luke 20, 9 through, let's see, 18. Yes. Right? Yeah. Okay. A little different venue today. I, I debated about including verse 19 in that, but I, Did I didn't. Okay. Yeah, because that 19 has the reaction of the, of, of the religious leaders, but I, I didn't. Okay. So I, I hope I made the right decision. Okay. <laughs> well, a little different venue here. Uh, nice scenery behind us. Yes. Um, we're on the back porch of the farmhouse, not in an office anymore. How, how do you like the new... You it's it's, it's uh, a little colder, you know. <laughs> Ho hopefully that doesn't come up no, 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 very noticeable on the on the camera. No, we're, we're, we'll do fine. We'll do fine. We have hot lights going here, and we'll do good. But um, well, we talked about let's see Israel's uh, past, present, and future right. related to this parable here. Um, in my care group, we talked about. The future for Israel. You got a question about the future of Israel? Yeah. You want to address that. Sure. To start so, us off? so the the parable is the parable of the wicked tenants, and I suggested that in this parable we have a little bit about Israel's past, something about their present. Are they going to choose to recognize Jesus as their cornerstone, or are they going to refuse to, to do so? And that the implications are something about their present as well. And mm -hmm. uh, what, I, I did this a little more in the second service, but in the first service I just touched on it very briefly talking about Israel's future. Uh, right now, we're in the future from the perspective of when the parable was told. Mm -hmm. And right now, uh, every person who is part of ethnic Israel uh, has the opportunity to decide whether or not to receive Jesus Christ as a cornerstone or not. And if they can receive him as a cornerstone or he can be the crushing stone that was referred to in the parable. Right. But there is a future, I believe, for ethnic Israel. And that future is described in uh, Romans chapter 11, uh, Paul talks about, and he began really talking about this in, in chapter 9, how his heart's, his heart, uh, his desire was for the nation of Israel. And he says uh, in verse 25 of, of Romans 11, Lest you be wise in your own conceits, I want you to understand this mystery, brothers. A partial hardening has come upon Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in. And in this way, all Israel will be saved. As it is written, the deliverer will come from Zion. He will banish ungodliness from Jacob. And this will be my covenant with them when I take away their sins. So I believe that that's talking about ethnic Israel. And the, the, the ultimate future of ethnic Israel is a uh, recognition of Jesus Christ as the Messiah. And there's going to be a, 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 a national repentance, of, an ethnic repentance of, of Israel. And they're going to receive Jesus Christ as a cornerstone. But right now in the present, from when that parable was told, each person must make that decision as to whether or not to receive Jesus Christ as, as the cornerstone. And that will be true in the future as well. Okay. Well, let's speak to that for a minute. Because the idea of uh, rejecting the cornerstone and receiving the cornerstone as it relates to Israel, um, how does someone who has uh, received that cornerstone, received Christ as Savior and Lord, how do they apply this pass uh, passage? I, th I think it's easy to see the application for those who have rejected and those who have received. Right. Um, Especially for those that are rejected, the dip, you know what happens to them. Verse eighteen, it's it's a terrible right. uh, destiny for for those. But how, how does someone who has received Christ apply this passage? Yeah, well, I think it's it's a, a greater recognition of what it means for Jesus Christ to to be the cornerstone. So I can kind of abstractly say, yeah, I want to make Jesus Christ uh, Lord of my life. But as mm -hmm. I come to a passage like this, and I realize, ah, that's what a cornerstone is. That's who Jesus Christ is. This is the breadth of His authority. There's a process of me as a believer uh, affirming my faith and saying, yeah, I'm going to continue to do the things I've committed to and, and make Jesus Christ Lord of my life. And there's going to be areas of my life that I hadn't even thought about his authority in that are going to be exposed to me as I am sanctified. I'm going to say, oh, yeah, that, I'm going to build my life around Christ in this area. And so it's not just um, in religious, you know, so-called religious matters, but in my parenting, uh, in my relationships with other kids at school, and in my finances, in my morality, in the ways, the things that I watch on television, uh, all those things are going to come under the Lordship of Jesus Christ as He's my cornerstone. Yeah, so uh, a, a challenging uh, application there. Yeah. Because it's all-encompassing. Right. It's not like there's one area of, I'll give Christ this, but right. not this. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. And, and can I touch on one other area uh, yeah. about, as we, as we think about, um, 
the Old Testament law, and, and I mentioned in the sermon that, that the covenant isn't a, a list of do's and don'ts. You don't enter into the covenant by doing right. something. Right. So someone else said, well, what about the Old Testament law? And I think that's a great question, mm -hmm. because even the Old Testament law ultimately wasn't about just uh, keeping a list of, of do's and don'ts. In Genesis uh, 26, uh, we're reading about Abraham. And Abraham, uh, God speaking to Isaac about Abraham, and he, he says, um, he says, Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. Now, that is a phrase that's used to describe the Old Testament law, the Mosaic law, that uh, commandments, statutes, laws. It's used later in the Pentateuch to describe the, the Old Testament law. Abraham didn't perfectly keep right. the Old Testament law. Mm -hmm. He violated uh, several of the commandments that would be in the Mosaic law. And yet, because he had faith, he's seen in the Pentateuch as one who kept the Old Testament law by faith. Mm -hmm. uh, Paul would say in Romans uh, chapter 4, if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed in God, and it was counted to him as righteousness. Right. And so even, the, even Abraham uh, is seen as keeping the Mosaic law, of being obedient to the Old Testament law, even though he didn't perfectly keep every list of do and don't because of his faith. The faith was credited to him as righteousness. Yeah. True in the Old Testament, true today. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Well, hopefully this is helpful uh, to anybody who's viewing this. Uh, we're looking at Luke 20, uh, 9 through 18. So hopefully uh, this will be encouraging to you as you try to apply the sermon post-Sunday. So thanks, Daniel. Yeah, thanks, Ben. See you next time.